All right, so here we are. This is the final result of the retop. If I turn on the polyframe, you can see kind of what it looks like. I was a little concerned that I might be going a little bit over the top, and it's possible that I did. But the poly counts aren't crazy here. It looks like we're, you know, 3,700 or cl uh, close to 4, 4K, which for something like this is, is actually not, not terrible at all. If this were, uh, you know, like a character or something, the budget would probably be uh, 10 times that, if not more. So the fact that most of it is is contained within 4K is actually not totally reasonable. And I guess you could make an argument for adding a little bit more geometry into the eyes so that they're like a little bit rounder or whatever. Um, in general, it's probably going to work out fine. There's some stuff here where, like, I have a, a some loops that are probably not really doing much to to describe much change in the uh, in the silhouette here. So arguably, they could be they could be removed, and that's certainly a, a normal part of the process. Uh, once you do your retop and you do your bakes, then you can go in and kind of find some edges that maybe don't need to be there. Because even though this is presumably within budget, uh, there's always a a reason to you know to make it as 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 efficient as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and turn solo off, and we're going to kind of look at the next step here. Uh, I'm going to use a plugin. This plugin is pretty useful. Uh, it's been like the support for it no longer exists, but it's still it's got some some features that I like a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and launch. It's called Z Scene Manager, and I'll show you what it does here. So it's a way to batch process subtools. So I've got all these subtools here. This is everything in the scene. And you can get information about like how many points it is, whether or not it's got dynamic subdivision, uh, how many subdivision levels there are, and whatever, a lot of other stuff. You can see here if it's got some kind of like a, a Boolean set to it. And that's just the default state here of these being union. And you can also see if it's visible or not. So I set the visibility up on the subtools before I started the retop process. So it can just go ahead and pick that up. And what I'm going to want to do here in order to make it so that all of these subtools will speak properly in Painter to what is ultimately going to be just a single low poly mesh. You know, I'll come over here and we'll uh, we'll just do a make poly mesh 3D, and then I would I would append it back in. I know it's about maybe a little bit off my recording screen there, but we can append, get that geo. So what I would call this, we we'll just do a manual rename here, is going to be something like body underscore uh, low period, right? And it's going to yeah, it'll keep the capitalization. I think it, there was some uh, behavior before where it would go ahead and then capitalize that. But so body low is going to be our, our name for, for the main low poly mesh. And then we're going to need to, it wants me to update because it just changed the name, but that's not really important for here. I'm going to go ahead and right click and we're going to rename this using incremental rename. So right now, all of these are these random names that are in Painter. They're not going to have any relationship to the, the low poly mesh that it's going to need to be speaking to. But if I change the name, to body underscore high underscore and then I hit enter there's gonna it'll throw an error here and I'm not sure what the error is but all you've got to do is hit cancel and then it will just continue on its merry way we give it a second there to think through that and you can see now all of those subtools that are visible and need to speak specifically to body low are now called body high and this is important the number at the end is kind of arbitrary it just needs to be unique and when when painter sees body high it understands it's looking for body high as the match for body low because it's just going to be looking for whatever the the essentially the prefix is here which is in this case is body and then any numbers after it are just going to get kind of lumped in and baked in a single pass with uh, with low poly so that's super useful there's another thing that you can do and i'll go ahead and demonstrate it i'm not actually going to do it here but they're currently I mean, I'm not going to save it. I'll, 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 I'll run it. But there's uh, currently everything is set to dynamic subdivision. Not everything, but almost everything. All the stuff that I had to do, the, the live boolean stuff, has, has been committed. But the majority of these things, anywhere you see one of these Ds, means it's using dynamic subdivision. So in order to save myself some time, what I can do is I'm just right clicking here. Is I can use a I can create a, a user command. In this case, I probably already did, but I maybe I need to make a new one. So we'll go ahead and do add new user command button, and I'm going to hit apply. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the dynamic subdivisions and apply it to in this case is the eyeball. So we'll just hit apply, and now the tool this this plugin has added a new command in my menu. So now I can just right click 
and go to user commands and then you can see apply was already in there but if I just hit apply now it's going to go through every single one of these and if it has subdivisions it's going to go ahead and apply it which means I don't have to do that manually which again is just a huge time saver so the next thing that I would do here were I ready to commit this would be to uh, apply some uh, material ID colors for the each panel it wouldn't necessarily need to be unique, but it would need to be unique relative to the other ones it was touching. So like if this guy was red, nothing else would be red unless I wanted them to have the same material in Painter. But I just wouldn't, like I could use red, you know, some other spot. It's it's thinking through whatever it's doing. It's going to take a, a kind of a long time because that's, that's a bunch of geo there. But anyway, so that's the workflow for modifying the existing subtools so that they'll play nice in Painter. Again, the thing that I'm, I'm I haven't done here, and I'll I'll show you at some point. Obviously, I can't now because ZBrush is is thinking real real hard or crashing one of the two. Is applying the material ID color, and that would be something that I, I'll talk uh, maybe a little bit more about once we see the impact of it in the Substance Painter phase. But this plugin here is available. That's no longer supported. Like I said, sorry, I'm not sure I can get rid of this thing. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's rendering over the top of ZBrush. So if you'd go to exoside.com forward slash, you know, Z scene MGR, whatever, um, any uh, Google search will take you here and you can find how to install it. And it's not very expensive. I forget, you know, with 20, 30 bucks, something like that. And in my opinion, if you're going to be doing this kind of stuff a lot, it's totally worth it. So there may be some functionality that, that currently exists inside of ZBrush that I'm just unaware of, but I, I don't think there's a way to like batch process subtools. So anyway, I'm not going to go through the trouble of recording the process of retopping the legs, but, or like, I think there's like some little antenna here that I'm, I'm just going to do that. But the wings are a bit of a special process. So the next video, we're going to pick up with retopped uh, legs and antenna, and then we're going to uh, take a look at how to address the wings.